Southeast Texas. That was just a little bit of one of my favorite pieces by Ravel. I wanted you to hear right away what the harp sounds like in addition to being able to see what it looks like. I'm really excited to share more information with you today about the harp and about myself. The harp is one of the world's oldest instruments. We have records of it being played in ancient Greece and ancient Egypt, and it's an important in instrument for folk music from cultures around the world. Part of the reason that the harp is such a popular and ancient instrument is that the way it produces sound is really quite simple, and people figured it out pretty early on. So if you've ever pulled a rubber band tight, kind of twanged it a little bit, that's the basic idea of what I do with my strings. So when I pluck a string, it vibrates, and then it vibrates against this wood here called the soundboard which helps amplify my sound out, and that's how the harp produces sound. Each string is tuned to a different note. My red strings are C, and my black strings are F, and they're just colored to kind of help me find my way around the harp as I play. So the strings are kind of laid out like the white keys on a piano. Harps come in different sizes. This is the largest size, so this is a concert grand pedal harp, and this is the type of harp you would typically see in a symphony orchestra. Um, we also have smaller harps, like the one behind me, that would be more typically used for playing folk music or in different settings. Um, this harp is about six feet tall, weighs about 100 pounds, and has 47 strings. My long strings make low sounds, and my short strings make high sounds. So just like other instruments, the longer the string, the lower the sound, the shorter the string, the higher the sound. Now, in addition to my 47 strings, I also have seven foot pedals that I operate while I play. And the foot pedals help change the pitches of the strings while moving the foot pedal. So you can hear that that note is changing. What's happening is that the foot pedal connects to these discs here. When I press down, the disc rotates, which pinches the string a little shorter, which sends the pitch a little higher, because again, shorter strings make higher notes. That way I can change the key and change which notes I have available while I'm playing without having to take my hands off the strings. It also allows me to do pretty cool sound effects. Like that, which is called a glissando. The harp is the only instrument that can play glissandos like that because of the foot pedals that we have. Because the harp is such a unique instrument, it really holds a special place within the orchestra. Typically, orchestras just have one harp. Occasionally, you might see two playing on stage, but it's usually just one. So we really are more like a soloist within the orchestra. So every time the harp plays, it often means that something maybe kind of special or important is happening, maybe something magical, because it has kind of that magical sound, and the sound of the harp can really stand out within the orchestra. I started playing the harp in third grade. I first began on piano in first grade, which was really useful because the way the notes are written out for piano is really similar to the way the notes are written out for harp. Um, I liked piano, but I had seen someone play the harp in a movie and just really fell in love with the beautiful sound. And I begged my parents to be able to play um, and in third grade I was able to start. And so I started on a much smaller instrument and worked my way up. It's been a daily part of my life ever since. I practice every day so that I'm able to play wonderful music with my colleagues in the symphony. And I really enjoy the variety of music that I get to play. I also teach students of all ages and it brings me a lot of joy and satisfaction to be able to play this really beautiful instrument. I wanted to share with you one of my favorite solos for harp from the orchestral repertoire. This comes from the ballet, The Nutcracker, 
by Tchaikovsky, and it happens during the waltz of the flowers. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning more about the heart.